OK, so in this video, uh, we've got a polynomial of degree 6. Uh, we want to solve this equal to 0. Now, we don't have uh, a button on our calculator that can solve polynomials degree 6. OK, so we've got to use a little bit of our ingenuity here and our algebra skills. Um, we've been told that f of i is equal to f of 2i, which is equal to 0. So I know that i and 2i are solutions, complex solutions, to the uh, polynomial, OK, to the equation, rather. Now, um, what you need to get from here is that there is uh, something called the complex conjugate root theorem. Now, we're going to look at this um, in more detail later on. But the complex conjugate root theorem says that if i, in this case, is a root, or rather is a solution to this equation, that means that minus i is also a solution, the complex conjugate. Now, we haven't got to complex conjugates yet, because I'm, I'm introducing a little bit more information here. But i is a solution implies that minus i is also a solution. OK? Uh, likewise, because I know that 2i is a solution, that means that minus 2i is also a solution. OK? So actually, I've already got four of the solutions. My job is to work out what the other two are because this is a polynomial degree 6, so I would be expecting two more solutions. OK, so the fact that I know that x equals i, or x equals plus or minus i, rather, are solutions, OK, means that if I square both sides, then I get x squared is equal to negative 1, and so x squared plus 1 equals 0. So that means that x squared plus 1 must be a factor. Likewise, I can look at x is plus or minus 2i. Squaring both sides, I get x squared is equal to uh, 4, sorry, negative 4. So x squared plus 4 is equal to 0. So that means that x squared plus 4 is a factor. If I know that both of these are factors, then I could use polynomial division by dividing by the product of those two, just as I did in the previous video. So x squared plus 1 times x squared plus 4 gets us x to the 4 plus 4, 5 x squared plus 4. OK. So I want to divide this by this x to the 4. Um, I'm going to, should I put in placeholders? I'm going to put in placeholders. I'm going to put in placeholders. It's good practice to do that. OK. Right, I need x to the 6. So this must be x squared. So I'd have to have 0x to the 5, I would get 5x to the 4, I would get 0x cubed and 4x squared. Right, I need 10x to the 4, there are no x to the 5, so I don't need anything there. Okay, so that would be 0x, uh, so 0x to the 4, 0x squared, 0, oh sorry, x cubed rather, 0x squared and 0x. Didn't really need the placeholders there, but I've put them in anyway. Now I need 10x to the 4. So I've got 5 already, so I'm going to need another 5. So I'm going to have 5 there. So I'd have 0x cubed there. I'd get 25x squared plus the 4x squared makes the 29x squared. So that's all working out. That's 0x and plus 20 on the end. Excellent. OK, so I now know that f of x can be written as the x squared, sorry, the x to the 4 plus 5x squared plus 4 times by this x squared plus 5. So in other words, it is x squared plus 1, x squared plus 4, x squared plus 5. So solutions to x squared plus 5 equals 0, 
So let's give myself a little bit of space. x squared is equal to negative 5, so x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5i. So we have six solutions. x is equal to plus or minus i, plus or minus 2i, and plus or minus root 5i. They are the six solutions to the polynomial being equal to 0. Now, an alternative route through would have been to recognise that actually this is a cubic in disguise um, and recognising that actually I could have put it into my calculator using the cubic solver with those coefficients and getting minus 1, minus 4, minus 5 and then replacing each of the x's with x squared and solving those resulting equations. Okay, That would have been an alternative which would have worked also.